Welcome to Music Notation Basics, Topic 5, Scales. So, here's the deal with music notation. You can learn to read the notes um, as printed on the staff, and that could be your only goal. But I think ultimately your goal is to become an artist, to become a better musician. And I think part of becoming a better musician is certainly understanding melodic construction, harmonic construction, and um, that entails a, a bit of music theory. <clears throat> so we're going to delve into some music theory here um, that will really, really help you um, read notes. Um, it's amazing how the stronger our ears are, the stronger our brains are, and the stronger our uh, muscle memory develops on an instrument, um, the better we can play music in general, um, or sing, or whatever it is uh, that we, we do as musicians. Um, so if you look starting on the staff here, you're going to see a new set of numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and these numbers no longer refer to rhythm. They're starting here from number one, referring to uh, numbers in a scale. One, two, three, four, etc. This first scale we're going to learn is called a major scale, and this one is called C major scale. It starts on C, and all of the other notes in the scale are formed relative to that initial starting point. This first note is called the one, the first scale degree, or the root. The root. And let's hear it first of all. That's the major scale. If you know solfege, or uh, or you've seen The Sound of Music, <coughs> you probably know Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. It's also known as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do, depending on which country you're learning solfege in, um, or what school you learn solfege in. I'm going to use Ti, Do at the end, and these notes, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, can also be thought of as do re mi fa so la ti do all the way up the nice thing about solfege is as you sing the solfeggio as you sing the solfege syllables they help your ear connect with your voice and with your brain and um, you can retain the pitch relationships um, actually quite well by learning solfege. That being said, this isn't a solfege or an ear training class. This is only a music notation course, so we're not going to delve into a whole unit on solfege. But uh, that's good to know. Um, we will be using these numbers a little bit um, because they help us um, <coughs> when we're constructing scales. So first of all, Scales have uh, significance because they're used a lot in music when you're actually improvising music or playing a, a written tune or written composition of some kind. So how do we construct a major scale? Let's start with that. In order to construct a major scale, you've got to know the difference between a whole step and a half step. So far in these lessons, we've only learned really what a half step is. And if you recall, a half step would take you from C, this note C, to uh, C sharp. That's it. And that would sound like this. Right? That's the Jaws motif. So, 
That's a half step because it's the closest distance uh, between any two notes. So let me erase that and let's look for where there are half steps in a major scale. There is a half step right here that goes from C to F. From this note, I mean, I'm sorry, from E to F. From this note to this note, E to F. There's another one going from B to high C. We call this C high C. We call this C middle C down here. So B to C and E to F. Let's hear E to F. And let's hear B to C. Now on your instrument, if you uh, play a wind instrument or a stringed instrument, you'll see there's no note in between E and F. <coughs> um, and so in each case, here, that's a half step, and here, that's a half step, and we've delineated half steps with a big old H, and of course here it says half step. Now, what's a whole step? A whole step is simple. A whole step is just two half steps combined. So if we go back to that C sharp right here, and we cross over C sharp to the next closest note from C, we get to D. So here we got a C, then a C sharp, and then a D, right? So if we just skip the C sharp and go straight from C to D, we get a whole step. So you can think of a whole step, W for whole, equals two half steps. Whew. That's our little formula. Whole step equals two half steps. And that's it. So if we start on any note, the first note we start on is going to be the root of that major scale. So because we start on C, it's called the C major scale in this case. And we go first up a whole step, and then up another whole step, then up a half step, then up a whole step, up a whole step, up another whole step, and up a half step. So it's up two whole steps, then a half step, then three whole steps, and then a half step. Now, let's see, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, whoa, seven. So if it's seven, why are there eight notes? And again, the answer is because you don't count the first one. It's almost always the answer whenever things don't add up. You're not counting this first note. This is just where we start. You could think of this as a star. It's our first note. We just play it, and that's not included in the formula. So after that, then we move up. Keep in mind that a whole step and a half step does not refer to any exact note. It refers to the distance between the notes, right? It refers to this space here between C and D, or between D and E, etc. So we play the first note, and then we go up a whole step, up a whole step, up a half step, up a whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Another thing to note is that if you've really worked through the formula, you're going to end up an octave higher than where you started. So we start on a C, and we end on a C, exactly an octave higher. So there's another way to think about whole steps and half steps, and there's a whole other lesson that really delves into this method of um, constructing major scales. But this is a really nice tip to follow. Um, split the scale into a bottom half and a top half. So the bottom half goes from this C up to this F. And the top half goes from this G up to this C. I want you to notice on the second line that all of these pitches are exactly the same as the first line. The construction is exactly the same. We start with a whole step, whole step, half step. I left out this W. You'll see why, but this is still a whole step. And then there's another whole step, whole step, and half step. The reason why I left out this W is because 
I want you to uh, just notice the pattern that's being formed between the bottom half and the top half. The bottom half, after we play our starting note, we move up one whole step, another whole step, and then a half step. I think of it like this. We move up one, from one, to two, to three, then we go up a half step to four. That's a little H. It can be capital H. It doesn't matter. Almost looks like a four also. So one, two, three, and then up a half step. Now, the top half of the major scale is constructed the same way. We go from one to two to three and then up a half step. This gets a little confusing. I'm saying one, two, three because it sounds exactly the same as the bottom half. Um, you could also write uh, uh, for your numbers here at the bottom, um, starting with this note, five, six, seven, and then up a half step. So this 5, 6, 7 is the same as this 5, 6, 7. It's the fifth note of the whole scale. Let's listen to the bottom half first. So this little bit here. Starting on C, then going D, E, F. Again, do, 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 do. Helps to sing it. See if you can sing along. Da, 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 da. Now the top half, starting on G, sounds really the same. Da, 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 da. Again. Da, 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 da. All right, so that's just a different way of constructing the major scale. So that was the C major scale in both cases because it's again it was based on C and then we built the whole steps and half steps moving from C. You can construct a major scale starting on any note. So the next thing I want to try is building one starting on D. So here's what we do. We're going to call D1 just like we called C1 because it's the first note. It's the root. Let's, label, let's circle it and label these. One, two, three, Again, these are called scale degrees. It's like temperature degrees, except these are scale degrees. And the cool thing about scales is that, for instance, in the case of a major scale, the three really always sounds like the third. It always sounds like do, re, mi. So here, um, the D major scale, let's hear it. Let's listen again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Now this is going to follow the exact same construction. We start with a whole step, W for whole, and we go from D up a whole step to E. What's the note in between? What would be the first half step? We're not going to play it, but what's in the middle there between D and E flat? We can think of it either as a D-sharp or an E-flat. But either way, that's what's in between D and E. Then in between E and F-sharp, this is another whole step, there's the note F. And F isn't part of the scale, and D-sharp and E-flat are not part of the scale either. This scale goes directly from D to E to F-sharp. Now up a half step from F-sharp is G. Let's listen to those four notes again. Again. It's got a sound to it, right? If we go back to C major and hear C major again, that's going to go. There's a sound of that. Here. Now, the only thing we got to do to cross over to the top half is add in this whole step. That shows us now that we can start on the A, right? Because so we're going from G up a whole step to A. And from A, the same pattern, whole, whole, half. 
Notice when I played the A, I didn't say whole step. I said a whole step after I started moving, right? So I played the A and then whole, whole, half. Because again, the whole step is not the A itself. The whole step is what gets us from the A to the B. The distance between the notes. Um, that's the whole point of an interval. It's a measurement. An interval, like an interval of time. Or in this case, it's an, an interval moving from one pitch to another pitch. Now, let's see if we can... Uh, well, actually, we'll hear all of D major again. Here we go. That's it. Now we'll do two more. This is F major. And um, the F major scale, again, we start on F. And again, you can number these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you really want to learn this, you got to take out your page and also number these. Don't just watch. If you're passive about it, you're not going to retain this stuff. you got to practice it. So this is a nice opportunity to practice. If, again, you can pull out your page and work on this. Um, and notice uh, the W's and the H's are gone, but we've left in one little interval construction or highlighted here with the red and then highlighted here with the red. Of course, your paper is black and white, but you see it's got um, the distance between the A and the B flat. <coughs> You can label that if you'd like as an H. Label the E to F up here as an H. Um, and you could go ahead and draw in the other ones too, right? W, W, etc. Okay, this would be a W again. Moving on, this whole thing would sound like this. Good. Now, let me erase some of this. Um, let's go back to C major for a second. Let's look at the very first four notes of C major. This is the bottom half of C major, of the C major scale. C, D, E, F. Check out the top half of F major. This is just interesting. This is one of the many cool patterns in music here. What's this note? high C, right? It's the same as this high C, by the way. There's only one high C, and that's it. And this is high D, this is high E, this is high F. C, D, E, F. So the top half of F major is identical to the bottom half of C major. It's just up at the top, because the whole F major, starting from here again, goes... There's only one note different, uh, only a one note difference between C major and F major. Because they both have F, they both have G, they both have A. But right here, F has a B flat, and the C major doesn't. C major has a B. That's just something that happened when we went from this A and we went up a half step. You see, at this moment in time, if you start on F, that's what you're doing. You're moving up a half step when you get to the A going to the B flat. But in the C major scale, when we got to the A here, and we, it was in the placement between the sixth note and the seventh note where we needed to go up a whole step. And they ended up sounding a, a lot different. Imagine the C major scale with a B flat here. This is no longer a major scale if I put in a B flat because then this would be a half step, but let's hear it. it. Sounds a lot different. Very different sound. There's one more we're going to do <coughs> E flat major. And all I'm going to do is play it. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and practice on this again, writing in all the numbers write in where the whole steps are, and actually see if you can get to know how these whole steps work. For instance, the whole step right here, between A flat and B flat, that's, it. that's hard. Because you got to think, wait, what is the note in between? 
and it's a little trickier than the others. Um, but the way this will sound from E flat as our starting note is going to be like this. That's it. Now I want you to notice that um, in for major scales you're using consecutive letters. So you're not going to find a major scale that, that uses two A's in it in a row or two B's in a row or anything like that. You are going to have an A at the very end, right, because it always ends with an octave. By the way, this has nothing to do with the E-flat major scale. I'm just drawing on the page now. But from here to here, that means you're going to have some sort of a B, some sort of a C, D, E, F, G, and then the A. Okay, And some of those will be maybe flatted or sharped or whatever. And the flats or sharps all depend on um, following the instructions of the formula. So right up here, this is kind of a very magic little formula you've got to know. And learn it as a mantra. Whole, whole, half. Whole, 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 half. Practice that a lot. Um, some people think, well, I've already learned my major scales. I learned those when I was, you know, 10 years old in band class or something. I believe you never learn your major scales. There's too much to notice. There are too many patterns. They're, they're alive. So keep working at your major scales. Keep practicing your major scales. There's so much to learn from them. It's just an ocean of uh, material. That's really the case for any scale. We're going over majors first because they're really, really common in music. And if you can understand majors, they're a great launching pad to understand other scales. Why does this matter if you just want to read notes? Why not just memorize all the notes? Again, it'll help you memorize the notes because m notes shouldn't be absorbed just one note at a time. If you can start seeing scale fragments while you play, for instance, you could look at all five of these notes. And right away, if you understand major scales, you'll recognize this pattern moving from D up to A with the sharp in the middle and all going from a space to a line to a space to a line to a space. I see that and I recognize immediately. I even can hear what that's going to sound like. If it were in a piece of music, I would know it would sound. And you better believe there are lots of pieces of music that go da 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 da, right? you know that's some tune um, let's move on to page two so page two is minor scale construction minor scales I love I love them more than major scales just because I like the sound of them um, there are a lot of different types of minor scales the most common ones are on the first four lines here I've underlined the four very very common types of minor scales, particularly in jazz and classical. At the bottom we try just transposing one of the minor scales up, but at first here we have C natural minor. So the C natural minor scale, you flat the 3, you flat the 6, and you flat the 7. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is if you if someone says, hey, what's in a C natural minor scale? The first thing you need to know is, wait, what's in a C major scale? Because these numbers down here start with the major scale and then they get altered to form the minor scale. So we started off with this line right here, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then we altered the 3, so the E became E flat, the 6, the A became A flat, and the 7, the B became B flat. So originally our C major scale, again, was this. And if we alter it, we get... Yeah. 
Let's listen to that again. Let's go up and down. Let's listen to the first three notes. Compare that to major. Here's minor. Here's major. So here's minor. Here's major. Here's the first five of minor. One, two, three, four, five. Now major. One, two, three, four, five. Big difference. Dorian minor, we still flat the three. But this time we only flat the seven. So we're not going to flat the six at all. Dorian minor sounds like this. Let me follow along with my pencil here. I screwed up at the end. Um, let's go down again. Melodic minor, we only flat the three. <clears throat> That's going to sound like this. Now I should say, this is sometimes called jazz melodic minor because in classical music, melodic minor goes up with only the flat three, but then down with the flat seven, flat six, and flat three. Okay? Um, harmonic minor. Flat three, flat six, but don't flat the seven. Keep the seven as a regular seven. So here we got. I think harmonic minor is the easiest to hear. It's got a really distinct sound up top. So we got Let's hear that top starting from G again. Right? So those are the four different types and the alterations to make them minor. Um, pattern you should see a huge pattern staring you in the face here. And to really see how this works, I'm going to draw a line right down here. This is separating 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8, because I want you to notice all of these minor scales have the same first five notes. They all sound like this, down low. Right? It's up at the top that where the alterations really happen. So we know it's flat three for all of them. But up top, you've got different sixes, sevens. Really, eight is, of course, always the same too. So really what you got to work on to learn your minors is the difference between each one, just looking at the six and the seven, OK? If you can figure out that, then you'll be able to know um, and really retain what goes uh, what is flatted or altered for each minor scale. Let's try one natural minor that is transposed. Here we're moving to D natural minor. So we've got the same formula down here. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, eight. So that's the same as the very top line, right? Where we got the flat three, flat six, and flat seven. But everything is different because now our starting place is D. Up here, our starting place was C. So let's compare it to the D major scale right here. OK, what we've got is flat 3. There's no flat sign by it. Why is that? That's because it was an F sharp. Here, it's become an F natural. So why don't we put a little natural sign? The truth is we don't need it because there's nothing in the measure now that says sharp it. So now we just know it's a natural F because it's just sitting there um, 
without any sign. So if it has no sign, that means you display natural f anyway. It's still called a flat 3 because the original was a sharp. Does that make sense? So you're taking away the sharp, um, and it's going to sound instead of D, E, F sharp, it's going to sound D, E, F. Notice the top five notes still have that minor sound that's the same for this entire page. Right? And it's just six, seven, eight, uh, or even just six, seven that are different. And notice here also C, it's, a, it's called a flat seven. It was originally C sharp. Now it's C natural. And again, we don't need the natural. Um, but this is just one example of transposing a natural minor scale, you're going to get more and more familiar with major scales and how um, to think of them as minor scales too. The more you do, um, the better you are going to be at note reading. And uh, that's it for now, okay? So study hard, and um, I'll see you soon.